Hey everyone, welcome back to Morrowind. Um, it's episode four, it's still Morrowind day. Um, I uh, I played back up to where we lost footage. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just cracking up about this. Um, and then I saved to where we should be. So we're not actually too far back. It is the middle of the middle of the night. However, you can see the moon, so that's cool. Um, hey, my mic is just kind of falling over. Excuse me. You can probably hear that too. Super embarrassing. Um, going poorly, gotta say. Um, God. it looks a little better on recording actually. That makes me feel good because, um, it's pretty dang dark. That moon looks amazing. Wow, that looks really good. Uh, this is the download of Morrowind from Good Old Games. Um, it's what Bethesda uses for a lot of their stuff. Wow. You know what? It's going to be a chill episode. We're going to watch the moon for a little bit. Um, the Elder Scrolls... I'm going to finish my tangent from last episode. Elder Scrolls is a hybrid of genre that combines science fiction and fantasy and cosmic horror and as many other genres as they can really fit in there because it was originally just a very boring, very standard D&D &D world, which is why there's stuff like Dark Elves and Orcs. Um, but it began to evolve to something really, really great. Um, so I guess I can explain what the deal with the Elder Scrolls is in terms of gods. Um, if you'll just excuse me for one moment. Uh, there's two kinds of deistic beings in the Elder Scrolls. One of them are called Aedra and one of them are called Daedra. Uh, and if you've played much of the Elder Scrolls, you've probably heard those terms before. Um, Adra and nice. Um, Adra and Daedra are just both the deistic beings. Daedra work a little more like demons, uh, and a lot of them look like demons as well. Adra are traditional, typical gods you know very greek um the root of it all originates from the original i think ninth divine his name is Lorcan. um so gods do exist in the elder scrolls it's not like a, are the gods real are they not we don't know Ooh. um they very much do you can oh you can see both moons that's nice um, yeah, this is going to be episode 3.5, I've decided. Um, anyway, so there's a bunch of gods, uh, and all the people know the gods, but a lot of them know them as different names. So, Lorcan is the, I guess, the canon name of the creator god, the guy who created Nern. Um, we're in the country of, we're in the island of Vardenfell, in the country of Morwind, on the continent of Tamriel, on the planet of Nern. So Nern's the planet. Uh, that's pretty important. Um, so the Nords call him Shor, uh, the Cyrodiil people call him Shezar. People know this god by different names, because he is a god. He is a for real god. And, yeah, he just kind of is. Um, so he's the creator god, but he's also kind of a trickster. People are pretty sure that he convinced the other gods to make the world by tricking them. Um, before anything existed, there was initially a cosmic void. Uh, and there were some primordial gods and stuff like that. That's not too, too important. Um, but they made these spirits called Ateta. Et Eda. E-T apostrophe A-D-A. Um, the gods that made them, Anu and Padome, 
gave themselves gave pieces of themselves up to do so, but they're infinite, so that doesn't matter. Um, so Lorcan is an Eteida, uh, and he made a plan to make things a bit more ordered. He wanted to make a planet, so he convinced, I believe, eight others to make a world for him. And Lorcan knew that they would have to give pieces of themselves up to do so. He either had seen the example left by Padome and Anu, or had some sort of intrinsic knowledge of it. But basically, he knew that he would have to almost die to make this world. And he did not tell the other gods. So, this actually led to some controversy before it even really got off the ground. The chief architect left and tore a hole in space and time because he left so quickly. That guy's name was Magnus. And if you did the Elder Scrolls, uh, Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim's Mage Gold questline, the Eye of Magnus, yeah, that's the same guy. Um, and that big hole in space that he left, that's the sun. And all the other people who left, all of Magnus's helpers and Lorcan's friends who decided to bug off before they finished the project, they left smaller holes in reality. And those are the stars that you're looking at right now. Those are not big balls of plasma and ionized gas that are giving off light and heat billions of miles away. Those are holes in reality. All of them are. Every single one of them are rips in the fabric of space-time. Like, and it's a very literal fabric, as though it was a curtain surrounding the world. This, the, the fabric of the reality, has a bunch of little holes in it. Um, but despite this, eventually, the Ed Ed made the world. Most of them. A lot of them helped because they wanted to help or because they initially wanted to help and then couldn't back out or they just believe in the sunk cost fallacy. Hey, don't believe in the sunk cost fallacy, by the way. It's dangerous. Um, but the ones that ended up helping are what we know as the Aedra now, uh, a.k.a. Divines. They are very classical gods. Um, and the Daedra are people who didn't help. And... That doesn't really mean that they're evil. It just means that they didn't give up pieces of themselves or their power to make a world. And that's why we have things like the good Daedra. And that's why sometimes the gods can do evil things. Um, so the other Aedra were pretty pissed when they found out that they had lost so much of themselves to make the world. So they ripped Lorcan into pieces. And that's what you're looking at right now. Those moons, Master and Secunda, are torn away pieces of Lorcan's body. That's his flesh. That's his flesh divinity. They couldn't really kill him, though. So after tearing these pieces out of, I assume, his torso, they ripped his heart out and stuck it on the end of an arrow and fired it into Nern. And it just kind of stayed down there for for a while. Uh, and remember that. Remember that Lorcan's heart is inside the world. For those of you who have played this game, you're probably rolling your eyes or chuckling. And for those of you who haven't, it's probably pretty obvious why I'm asking you to remember this. Yes, Lorcan's heart does play into the lore of this game. It plays into the plot, in fact. Um, but we'll get there. So, Aedra, right? Not all of them. Not all the Aedra are Aedra or Daedra. Some of them started to fade in power and became a race we call the Elnofe. And they had a real good control of magic. And the Eldofe went to Aldmeris, which is one of the other continents, along with Tamriel, Atmora, 
Yokuda, etc. Aldmeris might sound familiar to you. Um, some of the Elnofe left Aldmeris and became what we call the Wandering Elnofe. The other ones stayed there and kept getting good with magic. The Wandering ones, however, became more skilled with physical stuff. And they became men and myrrh. Elves and humans. So, elves and humans actually share a common ancestor, the Elnofe. And the Wandering and Old Elnofe are also very close. So, Elnofe went to Atmora. They wandered there, really. And it's really cold. They had to survive. They had to be tough. They had to be sharp. And so they became resistant to cold. And as the wandering Elnofe evolved further, they became Atmorans, who are naturally resistant to cold and really, really strong. And then those guys became Nords. And that's a really cool thing about this world building. Um, same deal with Red Guards. You know, they went to Yokuda. God damn it. They went to Yokuda and, like, had to be sharp, had to be quick, had to fight snake vampires. Um, but those were the essentially original races of men, and the Elnofe were the original races of elves that eventually turned into a race called Aldmer. And Aldmer is basically pure blood elf. Like, true, true elf. <sighs> I love this lore. But the elves started to spread out as well. And they made an empire. The uh, alien empire. They conquered Tamriel. Took everything over. Um, and just like the wandering Elnofe turned into various sub-races of men... These people turned into various sub-races of Elf. Dwemer, Falmer, Keimer, Altmer, and Bosmer. Um, man. I love this game. Um, I initially said to myself, I didn't say it out loud, of course. I said to myself that I would talk until the, court, the moon passed by my cursor. And it did that and more, and has now just gone all the way up into the sky. Um, like, the sun's coming up. So, I guess I'm just going to go on. I've had a good time hanging out, though, and just talking about lore for a good ten or so minutes. Um, yeah. Yep, sun's coming up. Today. This game is so dope, everyone. I'm really glad that I'm playing this game, and especially for an audience. Um, I really like games where you can just leave them on in the background. Well, you know, I like streams where you can do that. Um, I'm currently, uh, while teaching myself Morrowind, I would leave on Doom streams or whatever, and I'm currently teaching myself Dwarf Fortress. Um, I might make an LP of that. I'm not sure, though. Uh, and Should that's... you need something, I will be happy to oblige. Just one second. But anyway, that's going to be... Um... Oh, she's actually missing her glove. That's funny. I must find that bandit. He's in Pelagiad. Perhaps he'll come back to me now. Um, I might make an LP of Dwarf Fortress. I might not. It's a pretty uh, difficult game to grasp. Um, I think I'm getting it, though, but Dwarf Fortress is also a really good game to have on in the background or to have stuff on in the background while you play it. But we'll get back into the lore. I must find that bandit. I believe he's in Pelagia. Perhaps he'll come back to find me, though. Just walking through, minding my own business. Jewels. Here we go. He gave you a letter to give to me? Wonderful, thank you. I knew he cared. You know, you didn't have to do all this for me, and I must appreciate it. You're a wonderful person. You should visit my friend Emus, Emuset Brax in Tel Arun. She's a wonderful person. I think the two of you get along famously. Um, if there's anything I can ever do for you, I will be happy to. Soon I will be with Nelos, and all will be well. I don't care about them at all anymore. Uh, 
All right. Good stuff. Um, let's keep going to Balmora then. I could continue talking about the elves, but I would have to go on a bunch of tangents to explain all the elves. Um, but suffice it to say that the Aelid Empire was world spanning. It was all over the place. And it only really started to fall apart because of divine intervention. Or so we think. Um, I have a little less interest in human lore in this game, mostly because I'm interested in uh, really just dark elf lore. Um, I love the Yokudin lore, but we're not getting any of it. Uh, and I really, really like Keimer, Dunmer, and uh, Orc lore. Oop, there we go. Just make sure I'm going the right way. Oh, more. Eh, yeah. Let's go into the wilderness. What could, what could possibly go wrong? So, going off the path can be dangerous. Um, because you'll find various wilderness out here. Oh, then there's a signpost right there. I could just... See, I was considering leaving the path because I hadn't seen a signpost in a little bit. But honestly, now there's a signpost right there, so what's really the point? Um... Then again, oh, we're really close. Because we started here. And we got to go all around here. This is the Red Mountain, by the way, this big, big black spot on the map. Um, the Red Mountain is one of the towers. Uh, and I can explain what that means in a bit, but oh boy. All right, I think we're good. Um, Red Mountain is the source of all the ash, hence names like Ashlanders, the Ashlands, uh, a lot of volcanic activity. So what gives us things like ash yams. Um, and it's, uh, oh, nice, look at that. Um, I'll explain that in a sec. But it's the source of a lot of heat in the area. It's why that something so far north as Morrowind can actually stay as warm as it is. Because it's the most volcanically active place in Tamriel, I believe. So everything, things do level up on their own, just like in, you know, Skyrim. Um, and once all of these level up once, you get a level. Or if one of them levels up ten times... Or two of them level up five times. As long as you get ten levels off of your skills, off of your... Excuse me, I've got hiccups. Off of your major and minor skills, you will get a level. Um, I don't know if these actually matter for leveling. Yep, there's Balmora. So it's good to, because if you want to level up, having skills that you can grind is good. Because it's very easy to grind a lot of like non-magical skills like running or, do I see danger down here? A rat, I do. <clears throat> oh, I thought you were dead. There's the death animation. Damn. No rat meat. I'll take a quick rest. Resting is pretty easy. You oh, grow. <laughs> this ain't good. Oh, come on. <sighs> Holy Christ. Um, so that's a pretty good example of what I was keep meaning to talk about. Rat meat, yeah. Keep meaning to talk about. Um, this game has randomly generated... Who's giving me a call? Oh, it's my wife. Uh, hello, dear. Can I check to see if we have taquitos? Okay. Um, just a second, then. Uh, 
I'm in the middle of recording. You're actually on camera right now. Potatoes, right? The root vegetable? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> uh, hey, everyone. I've got to go check and see if we have potatoes, the root vegetable, um, in our cupboard right now. Uh, I'll be right back, though. 